So in your own words, could you describe diabetes for me? Diabetes, especially type 2, is when your body gets resistant to the way insulin interacts with your blood sugar. Either your blood sugar gets too high from the food you eat or your lifestyle choices so that your body doesn't make enough insulin to keep up with it or your body's resistant from that insulin so the insulin just doesn't talk to the sugar or talk to the cells to use the sugar correctly. Wow, that's the most scientific explanation yeah. I've had today. <laughs> Is that what your patients say? No. What do your patients say? Um, that they have sugar and that they usually think it's something that they've done. They take it very personal. You know that I've either um, their lifestyle choices, they've eaten the wrong things, or they're not active enough, or a lot of them um, even say that it's because their grandparents or their parents had sugar or their brother and sister had sugar, so they inherited it from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you think are the important risk factors for getting diabetes, type 2? For type whatever. 2? Um, I think a lot of it is lifestyle choices. There are risk factors that you can control, like who you're related to. Um, or you know who you're descendant from but I think the most important and the ones that we have control over are our diet choices, um, our lifestyle factors like how much we exercise, things like that. Um, what do you think are the most important things that if a person has uh, been diagnosed mm -hmm. and has the disease, what do you think are the most important things for them to do to keep the disease under control? I think one is admitting that they are diabetic and I find that um, when I see patients that are newly diagnosed, the denial is the biggest factor. Like, well, I know so-and-so had this and they didn't have any problems, or I feel fine, so I may have this, but it doesn't affect me. And I think just admitting that, yes, they have this and that they personally need to acknowledge that and take control of it is, is huge because that's the first step in realizing that they need to make those lifestyle choices. So you see a lot of patients. Yes, I see quite a few. And what are some of the common concerns that you see? Um, the number one, because usually people know somebody in their family or through their life that they've encountered that has had diabetes or what they typically call sugar, um, is that they know that person went blind or lost a limb or had um, a lot of hospital stays or sick time, I guess you would call it, because of their diabetes and they're concerned about that happening to them. And what do you say to them? that they can prevent that or they can control that from happening in their future, that it's completely preventable. And what kind of response do you get? Um, I get mixed. A lot of people are relieved that it's not a death sentence or it's not a major, um, you know, a life-changing event like losing a limb or something. But then when they realize that that entails major lifestyle changes, I get a lot of anxiety and a lot of resistance because people are very set in their ways and they hate making changes. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you, you don't have diabetes, but I do not. you have family member. Yes, I have my father right now. He's been a diabetic for about 13 years. Um, and he was one of those that didn't want to admit that he had anything wrong because he felt fine. And now that he is 56 years old and has had diabetes, like I said, for 13 years and has high blood pressure now too, it's starting to catch up with him and he realizes that he needs to take control of it. How, do you know what happened, that, how he got diagnosed? He actually works for, or I guess at the time it was USEC, um, out at the Piketon A plant, and they have to have a yearly physical. And whenever he went for his physical, they said everything looked okay but his eyes. He actually had some problems with his vision that was from running high blood sugars. And I didn't realize, I was 13 when he got diagnosed, and it's actually funny because we went to Disney World that summer, and we drove because we're crazy people, so we loaded up in the van and went to Florida. And I realized something was wrong when we had to stop every half hour for him to go to the bathroom because he had to urinate that often. So we knew where every restroom was between Southern Ohio and Orlando. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot of <laughs> restrooms. But that's actually how he got diagnosed and he got referred to an endocrinologist. And he's been, um, I mean, he's been compliant as far as he takes his medicines, he checks his blood sugar, and he, um, you know, always gets his A1C drawn and looks at that number. But as far as making his personal lifestyle changes like watching what he eats or making better conscious decisions about the food he, he takes in or exercising, he's not been as much as just following the doctor's order for checking and taking his medicine. Now what does your mother do to try to, try to help. help or support him? She realizes what she's supposed to do and she does it most of the time but my poor mom tries to make everybody happy so she will fix 
um, the wrong foods occasionally for special occasions like Christmas and Thanksgiving especially she brings stuff in the house and that's a big temptation for my dad and sweets aren't so much the issue but it's just um, just carby rich foods the potatoes and uh, he likes to eat too much of those things so she does try but I think now that we're having more problems controlling his blood sugar and I say we because it's a whole family ordeal um, I think she realizes she's she's not bringing things as much in the house, and she's not making as big as portions for him to eat or for any of us to eat because we none of us need it. Okay, so you just said it's a whole family ordeal. It so is. Tell me a little bit what that means. Um, I call my husband the food Nazi because even though he's not medical whatsoever, he still thinks he should be a registered and licensed dietitian. Mm -hmm. Whenever I was pregnant with the twins, is when he really got involved and I already did diabetes at the hospital so he knew a little bit because I would bring stuff home to try to learn or to try to educate him um, because I find that I became a better educator by educating my family but um, I call him the food Nazi because when I was pregnant he was like you can't have that it's not good for the babies you need to eat this well he did the same thing now that he can't focus on me and what I eat he does it to my dad and says oh I'm reading the label and this has this many carbs and you're only allowed to have this many per meal so you can only have half a portion size or you need to trade it for something else that we have available so um, my husband's involved my brother not so much he's still young and has that mentality that you know I guess he's invincible and dad is too so he doesn't worry so much but um, my husband and I both, I won't say we get on my dad's case because that sounds very negative, but we try to encourage him to make healthier choices and to really take care of himself, especially now that he's got the two grandbabies to enjoy and help raise. And then um, my mom goes to all my doctor, all my dad's doctor's appointments with him. That way, sometimes when you um, go to the doctor, you kind of get that glazed over look, so it's helpful to have somebody else listen. So she takes time off and goes with him to all of his doctor's appointments. And then when she grocery shops, she does try to be conscious and look at labels and um, make better choices when she buys food. That way we don't have inappropriate things in the house to tempt him. Or um, whenever she does have those things in the house, she tries to limit the portions that would be available. So it sounds like education's paying off in some ways. Somewhat. Some ways the baby steps. Uh -huh. Yeah. We don't, and that's why I try to encourage my dad. I'm like, I don't expect you to make a 180 overnight. But if you can make little changes, you know, quarterly, even make one big change quarterly, then that's a huge help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what can people, does your dad belong to any groups, a church, or? Mm -hmm. He, um, we're, they're very active in our church. My dad, until just recently, was actually um, in a, like, ATV four-wheeler club where they went, and that was what he considered his exercise a lot. Um, was a Little League baseball coach forever, but now that my brother and I are older, he's pretty much content with just being Papa and going to church. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, in these groups that he belongs to, mm -hmm. does uh, the topic of diabetes ever come up, or does he get any support there? I think probably quite a bit at church because there's a few, quite a few diabetics that go to church with us, and it's harder when we have like carry-ins and things um, for them to find good choices that don't mess with their blood sugar too bad. But I think that as a culture, we, um, I don't know, I don't say we don't like to broadcast our issues, but it, it, people keep it closer to home, I think, than more so at these groups, from what I've seen. Um, I'm a very open person, and I'll talk about anything with anybody, so I guess I don't see it so much personally, but I know looking from the outside in, I do see it a little bit that they don't want to open up and talk about it a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um. What do you think a community can do to help prevent diabetes? I think a lot of it is just education and being open for conversation. You know, and I, I think um, what I see more than anything is people judging or maybe putting the wrong information out there because I hear so many people say, oh, well, you have diabetes, so you can't eat that. Well, it's not that they can't eat it. They just have to make alternative choices with other things that they eat. Um, or learn how to balance, I guess, more than anything, is balance your life and lifestyle. And I think that's a big misconception. And a lot of people that have a little bit of knowledge, just enough to be dangerous, are throwing those incorrect misconceptions out there. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it is just proper education and teaching them the real truth and getting how them. Do do that's a hard part. <laughs> that's the hard part. I think it's just one person at a time. You know, we're one family at a time, getting mm -hmm. the correct information out there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, getting people to, um, 
One of the things that I've kind of noticed in the population is that uh, there's sometimes conflicting messages. Mm -hmm. So grandma says one thing and yeah. mother-in-law says one thing and mm -hmm. the doctor says something else. You know, do, do you have that kind of thing? We do. We actually just had a um, emergency room visit last Thursday, last Wednesday morning, so we could go today with my dad. And it was because his blood pressure was too high, but when he got there, his blood sugar was too high as well. And they were giving him insulin. Well, my dad had never had insulin before because he was always just on oral glycemics. And they, they gave him the shot, and he goes, well, what was that for? And the ER nurse just goes, well, your sugar's too high. We got that. We understood that, but he didn't understand. You know, why were they giving him a different medicine when he already took medicine for his diabetes? What was his sugar? Was never told what the number was. And then when the doctor came in, you know, my dad said, and I was with him. So, and, and they didn't know that I was a nurse, nor that I was the diabetes educator at the hospital. So I'm just sitting there, kind of being a window shopper and observing to see how things work. And you know, the doctor tells them, "Well, you're overweight, so you need to lose weight." And um, you know, diabetes is really dangerous, so you need to take care of yourself. And that was all the education my dad was given. So I asked while I was there, you know, can we get a, a referral for a nutritionist? That way when he's outpatient, he can go and learn how to eat. That way he can maybe lose some weight and get better control of his diabetes. Well, that his family doctor has to order that. And while I understand that, I think when you have a captive audience and somebody's asking for that information, why you wouldn't dole that out? And I think that's a, that's one way to get to people because right then he was scared because his blood pressure was very high and his sugar was very high and it was enough to make him want to do something and he asked for the help and we didn't give it to him mm -hmm. as a profession and that was disappointing for me so that's been my new mission is when people ask for help that we're willing to bend over backwards to give it mm -hmm. I'm sure in um, uh, doing diabetes education you see people like your dad who had the disease for a long time mm -hmm. come in. That's really what I see more than anything and I, I think that's sad because I think anytime you have somebody that's newly diagnosed they need that education. You know a lot of times in the physician's offices they're diagnosed or sometimes they even go to the ER and get diagnosed or are diagnosed by accident as inpatient and they're handed a meter and they're handed a pamphlet and it says you know and they say check your sugar and eat better and lose weight and that's all they get and that's not enough education so I think one we're missing that we're not referring people that they get one-on-one -on -one attention with with a nurse and with a dietitian and with a pharmacist that teaches them comprehensively how to take care of themselves and prevent and control their diabetes and then I get mainly people that have been diabetic for 10 or more years that are finally realizing that they can't control it with the knowledge that they have now and they need help and that's mainly what I see people that are at the point they're starting to have long-term complications and their A1Cs are not where they want them to be and they don't usually, what motivates them to come see me is that they don't want to take shots. They don't want to move on to insulin. They want to keep taking the pills, so they want help. Mm -hmm. That's usually how I get people in my door. One of the problems in communities seems to be that we don't really have enough diabetes educators. Yes. And diabetes education usually costs money. Mm -hmm. So do you have any solutions for how to do that better? I know, and this is just me personally, I cannot say that just because somebody cannot pay that I would not help them. I think that as a nurse, that whenever I got my license and had my education, that I stood up there, I stood up there and swore that I would take care of people. And that doesn't mean people that have insurance and can afford to pay me. That's everybody. So if I have somebody personally that says, you know, my insurance will pay so much, but I can't afford my copay, will you come right on in? And I'm not going to worry about your copay, or work, we'll work with something out. You know, um, we have, we've had the grant program through the Ohio Department of Health and Healthy Ohioans for the past year, and it's over now. So I don't know. We've seen 300 and 348 people, I think, last count, and I don't know what we're going to do this year for the the next 300 people that need help. We're trying to find solutions, but money is so tight right now. Um, ideally, it would be to teach. Um, I think one of our big problems is that floor nurses that have nursing education and they're more than capable of taking care of diabetics and teaching people with diabetes, I think they're afraid. I think that um, they don't trust their knowledge base. So I think reinforcing that and teaching them that it is okay to help these people and you do know what you're talking about, so get your message out there. Um, I think anybody that lays their hand on a patient or a client or a community person 
can be an educator, can be a diabetes what educator. Think, what would you think about, um, as a diabetes educator, focusing on teaching nurses? How to, How to take care of diabetes? Yeah. That's my that? mission for this summer. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've actually, just because of my dad's ER visit, I said that, and because I felt like it wasn't that the nurses didn't want to answer my dad, I don't think they felt comfortable like they were telling him the right thing. So I think they were better off to give him a very vague answer instead of telling him, well, I don't know and I'll find out. I think they felt like that he would lose, they would lose credibility if they couldn't answer him what he wanted, so they gave him a vague answer. So my mission is to get basic diabetes information out there that would be useful for all nurses or all, even all healthcare providers, not even nurses. But, um, you know, whether they're a nurse aide or a, or a registered nurse or an LPN or a transporter or they're just a registrar, just to recognize what diabetes is because everybody, I don't care who you are, I'd guarantee that everybody in this hospital knows somebody that's a diabetic so they can make a big difference, just by having a little bit of knowledge. Mm -hmm.